guys <clears throat> sorry I kept you waiting for a long time I was meant to get here by midnight and of course everything always takes twice as long to uh, get ready as I expect it to of course uh, so anyway if you don't mind see if you can chime in here and let me know if everything um, looks and sounds okay Hit me up with the chat. Let me know if you can hear my voice and uh, if you can hear the guitar and uh, if anything's too loud, if my voice is not as loud as the guitar or vice versa. Hey, hello. Very good, thank you for the response. <laughs> that I'll be showing you tonight. Let me run it one more time here for you. So uh, I'm capo three, and uh, we're starting out with the traditional A grip here. From the A string, it's O two two, and then we've got we're doubling the A with the uh, six string at five, and uh, we've got this to start with. So we've got. Uh, third and fourth strings played together and then we're going to the fifth and the sixth so we're doing uh, threes okay then I'm going to grab third string three second string two second string three and second string five okay I get to second string five I'm doing that same three roll but now I'm moved up a string per finger here on the right hand so I've got second and third together then the D string and then the A string interpret that a few different ways you don't have to be it doesn't have to be uh, exact right so or okay I am hammering the second string three sorry no I'm hammering to the five okay Chat me up and uh, let me know if that's not clear enough. 
Okay, and then we're going to head on over to, uh, we're going to do second string three to first string five. And back to three, so. Then we're going to second string two. And uh, second string one and third string three, so. And that pull off, I think I'm going from, it looks like five. So it's a, I'm, I'm picking second string two, then I'm hammering to five, and then it's like a trill. Uh, right, so I'm picking two, and then I'm picking five, and I'm pulling back to two, and then sliding to one. Okay, let me know. Uh, okay, we got some people chiming in here. Hey, Trung. Yes, I won't delete it. Uh, hi, thanks for the tu tutorial. You're very welcome. Mm -hmm. Hi, Trung. Yeah, man, I'm doing good. Thank you. Okay, so you can hear that trill where we do the pull off five to two and then the slide to one. It's pretty quick. Okay, then we're going to grab B flat chord here from the fifth string. I'm sure you already know this if you play a little flamenco. If you are good enough to learn and play this falsetta, you probably know what this chord is, but uh, I'll be as descriptive as, as I can here. B flat, this is uh, from the fifth string, one, three, three, three. Once we get to second string three, we're gonna go dip down to two, back up to three, up to five, and then we're gonna do two, five, two, and that is pick, hammer, pull. Okay, one more time. All right. Hopefully that's clear. twice. Play a little bit with I got my metronome over here. I like to set the metronome up on the off beats, if you know what I mean. So for instance, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. slower. repeating that. Okay, so then we're going to head over to a different version of this B flat chord. This is another um, Again, if you're an intermediate to maybe slightly advanced uh, flamenco player already, you will have played this before um, in different iterations. This is, okay, so that is 
starting from, we're doing threes, uh, it's the top three strings, um, one, two, three, one, two, three, and our frets are three, 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 two, three, three, okay, so, and then we're going to go back to three, three, three again, okay, so, that is first string one, I'm sorry, first string O1 hammer on, to second string three. Let's put that all together. That starts on, that first arpeggio starts on, you know, the downbeat, the one or the 12. Okay. Let me show you how that connects to the other part. So say we're coming out of this. the metronome real quick. Sorry. Okay, so that's how that works. All right, so after this, We're going to do a little uh, 16th note triplet, I guess, would be the time on this. It's actually going to finish with the hammer back to three here. Okay, so this is like we're holding sort of a D shape without the F sharp on the top. It's from the D string open. We're going uh, D string O, third string two, second string three. Then we're going to take second string down to two and hammer it back to three. Okay, so that's. We're going to grab the high string open. Okay, and then on the, we're going to stay on the high string and we're going to do five, three, one, O. Oh. Oh yeah. <clears throat> um, sorry. Okay, now as far as which notes you're going to hammer or pull in that, or pick in that section, it's going to be up to you. Um, I think it's not too crucial in this part. Sometimes I'm real picky about, you know, I'll tell you, you know, don't, don't pick that note or make sure you hammer or pull that note. In this particular case, you could probably do whatever you want there. It should work out just fine. That's how I play it. I go, sorry. So I'm pick, pick, pull, pull, pick. Okay, but you could go. That would be just fine if you wanted to pick all those. Okay, it's a bit of a stretch doing that. Maybe not. Depends on... Depends on you, okay? So, okay? So let me show you how that goes with the time really slow coming out of the other part. Sorry again. Now we have a bit of a tricky part. It's cool though. It's a cool sound. Um, he does a cool little trick here with this F. So what is that? That is starting from the sixth string. We're going to go one. Then we're going to skip over the A string with the fifth string. And we're going to go to the D string open. Third string two. Sorry, I'm mixing up my Sometimes I'll say string names, and then sometimes I'll say string numbers. Let me try to stick with numbers here. So sixth string one, we're skipping the fifth string. We're going fourth string O, o 
open. Uh, third string two. So it's sort of like a F six. Okay, this is the root. This is the six. This is the major third. And this is second string three, which would be a 13 or a six. So it's another D. We had another D. We had F, D, A, D. Of course, I'm speaking relative to the capo. It's not really F and D and all that. It's, this is, we're speaking relative to the capo, right? Okay, so. Okay. So here's the tricky part, or at least the way, well, you'll, you'll, you, can, you can determine if it's tricky or not, I guess. Let me check out uh, this chat here real quick. Oh, very cool. Yeah, good. Sorry, I'm having trouble. I can, I've got my phone set up here because uh, I thought I would be able to see this. Let me see uh, if this comes into the... I have to wait. Okay, there it is. It's delayed, so I can't really see. Let me see if that's in the frame. Uh, it's sort of in the frame, I guess, but uh, no big deal. You can see the tripod a little bit, but that's not going to hurt anything, right? All right, so. Okay, so one more time, sixth string one. Scope over the, f the fifth string. D string open, sorry, fourth string open. Third string two, second string three. Then we're gonna pull that second string three to one, same string. And then we're gonna descend what is basically an F major triad. Second string one, third string two, uh, fourth string three. Okay, so now we have this. A little tricky. The thing is, is you know, I remember when I first learned this and I went, I got to this part. And you know, when I approach an F chord, I kind of go for the bar, but he's playing the D string open. So it's like you gotta kind of leave the bar open until you get past that D string. And then the bar can come down and then you can do the pull off on the second string from three to one and catch the rest of that you know catch that with the bar rather than having to let go of this and go watch the first finger here you see that i have to come over didn't want to have to do that so doing the bar but it's a little tricky because you have to start with an open bar and then go into a bar in the middle of it so see that so that'll, I'll leave that up to you. You can handle that uh, any way you want to handle it, okay? So, and then we're gonna go to fourth string open. All right, so. And then we're gonna hammer that open D string to five. Sorry, fourth string, trying to stick with the string numbers here. I'm very tired, uh, forgive me. Then we're going to pull that five fourth string to a two fourth string. Okay. And finally, we're going to go. We're going to come to the C here. This is fifth string three. Then we have an interesting chord here. This is a C seven. I guess we'd call it a C seven add. Uh, 13 or 6 Okay, this is maybe a bit of a Bit of a stretch it doesn't you don't have to you know, it might be a bit of a Pain to hold this like I'm trying to hold it here because I'm showing it to you But if you just have to hit it pretty quick um, 
you get in and get out, it's not too bad. Okay, so I can see that I'm getting some really nasty glare on the top of this guitar here. That's better. Okay, so we've got this. Sorry. Okay. And we've got a little three stroke uh, rascato on that chord uh, with an upstroke at the end. Really hard to hold that chord for a long time. There it is. Okay. So let's try to do that with the metronome so you can hear the context of how that's supposed to come off with the timing. Sorry. wonderfully. Um, I should have warmed up. Okay, so we've come to rest on this C7 at 13 here. Then we're going to head over here and go. Okay, this is starting at the fifth string. We've got four, three, five. Okay. Okay, and then we're going to pull that third string five to three, uh, third string three, so. Okay, I did that, that was third, that was, I'm sorry, that, let me start again just to be clear here. This is five, I'm sorry, <laughs> from the fifth string, four, three, five, staying on the same thring, string, three, Fourth string, that's uh, six, five, three. Then we're going to go six, four, three. And once we get to that fifth string three, we're going to then grab a C7 grip here. And uh, this can be an open bar. Hope you, you know what I mean by open bar. I'm just, I'm not pressing the bar down, I'm just grabbing the root, the fifth string, and this is all open. The G string, the third string is open, and the first string is open. Okay, so that sounds like this. One more time, a little slower. simply going to take this grip and move it down a half step, then another half step, and finally we have, starting from the fifth string, one, O, oh, two, pull off, we're going to go back to the fourth string and do a three, two, O, oh. sorry, and then we're going to go to the fifth string, and uh, you could either do 310 or 410. Or. Okay, so that would be. One more time. Then we're going to grab a three. I'm sorry, we're going to grab a B flat here. Again, you could do an open bar. We're going to do a quick three. And then our A flat nine. A flat nine is simply the A with an A sharp in it, right? So that's the traditional A grip we started with, except for third string is three over top of that. Okay, let me do that last bit. Okay, let's 
try it with the metronome. A little slower. conversation before the last you know uh, especially when you're not warmed up and trying to slow these down is not easy some of these grips are kind of wacky and uh, I've played it for years you know way faster and uh, when you try to slow it down and you're trying to teach it and you're holding all these grips down it's like challenging uh, it's good it's a good thing try to get you the time here with the metronome. Okay. So hopefully that's clear. So I think I will run through it from the top slowly and uh, as descriptively as I can. Here we go. Sorry. <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> All right, it's a really cool falsetto. It's got some little challenges in it there with uh, some of the grips, but uh, pretty straightforward. It's not overly syncopated. I felt like it was a good choice for a wide range of levels. Um, you don't have to be super advanced to play this one, I don't think, if you keep the tempo at a reasonable pace. And um, okay, so. If you have any questions, somebody says great. I can't read the name from here, but thank you. It's fun. I just really, I used to be a member of Foro Flamenco Forum back in the day. Um, I think I got in there, it was been a while, you know, this is, we're talking early 2000s. Uh, and um, some of you guys are still around from back then. Uh, it's pretty cool. I think I saw James Ashley Mayer is still around. I don't know. I think Ricardo is still around. I know he's on he's on Facebook, of course. I don't, I, I'm pretty sure he's in here somewhere. Ricardo Marlowe. Uh, and uh, some other people. 
that I know and love are still hanging around here. So, and I just joined the group, the Facebook group, uh, not very long ago, like, you know, maybe a couple weeks. And uh, very cool to see everybody there. I see some good posts. Uh, Jose Tanaka, that was another guy I saw uh, from back in the day who's still doing some great stuff. Um, he's posting some really cool stuff, some older stuff and some brand new stuff. Sounding really amazing as usual. Looking amazing, uh, shooting in 4K, really stunning looking videos, awesome stuff. Um, <laughs> You guys probably know Henrik. Uh, he's been hanging around, checking out some of these live streams, talking to him a little bit. It's good to see him, hear from him again. He mentioned this uh, falsetta from um, One Summer Night. gotten through this one yet I'm just kind of messing around on finishing learning that the rest of that phrase it's really tough to learn that one off the, the record um, there's so much going on the live record uh, and I sort of got a little bit of that next line um, <laughs> Since we're here, maybe we'll do a quick Paco thing. Let me think of what I could do. Or maybe we could do um, what I can. What can I do just off the top of my head to show you show you guys something cool? I'm kind of an old school guy. Um, what about? Um, Let's see here. to run through real quick. That's a little bit of a pain in the, in the, maybe I should go capo one or two, maybe. Let's try, um, let's try capo two. Because that, uh, 
E grip with the G sharp in it is pretty ridiculous uh, with no capo. I think I'm pretty sure he plays a capo two or capo one at least. Okay, so again, you know, uh, there's little prerequisite here. I mean, you know, um, you've got to be maybe a bit familiar with this. If you're going to jump into this, I don't know if, you know, if you're a complete beginner, I don't know, you know, do your best to keep up here. I'll try to keep, be as descriptive and as uh, slow, not too painfully slow, but I'll try to get you through it here. So. Okay. So we've got uh, E major. With a 13, that's the second string, second fret. And we're doing our classic Alleluia opening threes. Okay, we're doing this guy here where we're pulling the 13 off. Okay, you guys probably have done that at some point if you played Alleluia before. Then we have a little run here. It starts at the second string. You could play it a couple ways. I, I play it uh, second string two, and then now from there we can e we have a B note that you could either get that open second string, or you could go over to the third string four. I go to the third string four for this note, uh, so that the rest of it is three notes per string. So, so the whole thing is. Second string two, then the third string is going to be four two one, and the fourth string is going to be four two one, and then we're going to that note here that we end on fourth string, fourth string one, is the major third of this B seven, which is why that run works so well and sounds so good going into the B. It's landing on the third of the chord. All right, awesome. All right, so. Sometimes I'll pick every note in that run, and sometimes I'll slur the third string two to one. Sometimes I'll slur that. Or sometimes I'll pick it. Okay, your choice. Then we're going to go up and we're going to play another inversion or voicing or whatever you want to call it of this B7. And uh, this is going to be this. It's going to be from the fifth string. It is two, four, two, five, five. Okay, it's a sus. Uh, the high string on five, that's just another seventh, another dominant seventh. It's a really nice chord. And uh, you're just kind of just doing a flourish, a raschiato. I don't know. You know, this is a... It's an old school Alleluia, so you know it's not strict time. You know he's taken a lot of liberty on the time. It's it's pretty you know libre, whatever you want to call it. All right, so okay, so okay. And then we're going to do a little run here, and uh, this run's open to interpretation. I'm not even sure I do this run like exactly the way he did it. Again, uh, the time is, you know, he's taken pretty major liberties with the time in this one, I feel. Although you could play a strict time. But anyway, here's the run. Okay, that is second string. Uh, well, let me just show you the shape, okay? So this is second string. The second string shape is two, four, five, and it's the same as the first string shape, two, four, five. We're ascending, and then we're going back down, okay? Okay, that's fairly straightforward. And then we're going to go back up and grab the second string five, four to, to end it. And as you can see, well, we're ending on a third again, just like when we did this run. It's an E flat. It's 
the third of B7. We're doing that again in this run. We're landing on that D, uh, E flat, sorry. It's the third of the chord. Um, okay, so that all makes sense, hopefully. Sorry. And I tend to, sometimes I'll, it's like the other run, sometimes we'll, I'll tend to pick all the notes and then other times I will do a pull off and this run I will pull it off at there and then I'll pick the rest you know how it is you know sometimes just in a little run like that sometimes just slurring one note will give you a little you know um, will get you through it it's a little easier uh, when you just get that one extra note that you don't have to pick right <laughs> Then he does a little cool little thing that he goes, he holds this B7 here. This is just a root five A form, A shape B7. Let me, let me, might as well describe it to you. It's fifth string, two, well, we already did this, but we'll do it again. Fifth string, two, uh, four, two, four, two. Okay, now that's different, okay, before we did this chord back to just the normal okay this was a sus and now we're back to just normal b7 and we're going to do this so we're going across the chord from the fifth string to the second string and then we're pulling off to two second string to two and then we're going to third string four Then we're going to go and approach an A chord. We're going to start with the fifth string open. And we're going to hammer that to four. And then we're going to arpeggiate the, the rest of this A major. Okay? Okay, so that's going to be like this. Notice that I, uh, when we do this C sharp on the fifth string, the fifth string at four, I'm hammering that. So. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab third string, four, two, four. Okay. And that last note is the downbeat, I believe, of the next measure, I'm pretty sure. So, so from here, um, do when we come back around okay that's pretty straightforward right that is just uh, we're reverse arpeggio the E major here and uh, I'm only we're only doing this grip to the D string because we're not playing anything below the, uh, the D string although you could go or a little golpe on the second string Okay, you can do that either way, either however you want to state that E chord. Again, these things aren't, you know, we're not looking to do every single last little note exactly the same. It can be, you can interpret it the way it feels good for you. Okay, so that last bit. Um, okay, quick review. slow these things down. So a little add-on to this last part where we do the where we do the third string 424 four, where we go sorry that part there he adds a bass he adds the third in the bass when I, I mean a major third it's the major third of the this E that we're getting ready to go to. Okay it's a G sharp. That is the major third of E. Okay, so. Okay, so I don't know if you caught that. 
is as we're doing the pull off and hammer on well we're not really hammering that back on we're going so we're just picking pulling and then picking again and we're taking this G sharp on the ride with us we're grabbing that and that's kind of going it's go so this is going at the same time that this is going so that's okay that sounds like That's a real cool idea there with that uh, third in the bass. That's pretty sweet, all right? Time. And then we do our... And then we're back into this again. Okay, and then we're going to do this. Sorry. So this is the E7, uh, this is E7, it's got two sevenths in it, the D open and then the D at the second string. I like to kind of include the, this interval thing because I think it's important that you know these intervals. Um, it's just, you know, some of you know what I mean. But if you're not hip to those yet or you're getting to know those, you know, that's something you want to pursue as much as you can. That's going to really help you. It's going to help you be a better player uh, no matter what you play and uh, it'll inform you as to what's going on harmonically in, uh, in this music and in any music. And uh, it's always better to know more about the inner workings of what you're playing here, okay? It really helps with transcription too. <laughs> So here's our deal here. We're going to play the, uh, we're going to have this chord grip, which starting on the E string goes O, 2, O, 1, 3. So we're going to grab 6 and 2, we'll play those together. We're going to pull off 2, then we're going to arpeggiate down the chord. Sorry. Okay, so we're going down the chord and back up down to the 5th string and back up to the 2nd string. Then that's going to go into a run which continues on the 2nd string which we just played open at the end of that phrase. That's the 2nd string open. That's going to take us into this run. That's going to go 0, 2, 3. And then we're going to go to the 1st string, 0, 2, 4. Back to 2, 0. Back to three and two. Notice that this run goes and ends on a major third of the chord again. So notice he's doing that a lot. And uh, once you see that little trick, you'll notice it's everywhere. These guys, or even in any style, even in American blues and jazz, that's what they do. Um, you know, you uh, are in the chord. You know, you're you're landing on chord tones. You're always kind of describing the chord. Even when you're playing notes and scales and runs, you're still describing the chord. Okay, I'm just looking at the chat, excuse me. Okay. They're coming up on my phone here, but uh, they come up and then they fade away. So if I'm not looking, I miss them. I'm learning about this as we go here. I'm going to find a system that works here at some point. I'm thinking maybe if I um, put my phone in portrait, uh, I'll be able to catch the uh, chat better. Okay, anyway, so... Notice that run, that run ends on a C sharp. That's the major third of the A chord, which we're going to do a little thing on when we end this run, okay? So, okay, another standard 
thing in Alegria that I'm sure you've done. Okay, uh, I'm going to leave that up to you, to your interpretation. You can keep it even simpler. You don't have to do the... Here we are again where we, he's doing the, the, the major third in the bass. This is the C sharp again. So we're ending the... Take a look at how he's utilizing, utilizing these major thirds of the chords. He ends the run on the major third, and then he puts the major third in the bass. Okay? Okay. Notice how he starts the whole thing off on the seventh. Okay? That's another important interval to know in any chord that you're playing. Well, if it's, if it's a dominant chord. Knowing where that seventh is. Notice how he uses thirds and sevenths almost constantly when he's starting and ending phrases. Okay, notice that. That's, a, that's pretty important. Okay, so... Okay, and then we've got a little thing here. Uh, okay. This is the C sharp in the bass, and on top I've got... This is 5th string 4, this is 3rd string 2, 2nd string 2, 1st string open, and we're coming back to the 2nd to the string where it was, 3rd string where it was. Okay. Then we're going to dip down this bass note to the C natural. Okay, and then we're going to grab this B7 grip again and do this. Okay, this is the same C7 grip we did a minute ago. Only thing different is I'm fingering it differently because I'm going to need to grab the high string on the 4 at the top and I'm going to pull that off to the bar and inside the bar here like this. Okay, so... Very cool, right? Okay, so uh, sorry. Very cool, right? Love it. This is one of my favorites. Um, just a straight up E major, and the arpeggio is six, one, two, three, four, three, two, one. Okay, so now we've got. Okay, then we're going to grab a B flat diminished chord with the high string at the top on two, and we're pulling it off just like we did with this chord, okay, same deal. Remember that, you know, the way I think of diminished chords, if you think of this, it really, I see it as an A7, A7 being, starting from the fifth string, O, two, O, two, O, you simply sharp the root. We're going to take that A up to A sharp or B flat, and then that becomes a diminished chord. Okay, so we've got this. Okay, so. Uh, and then we're going to go back to this same root 5 A form B7 grip again and go. This arpeggio starting from the fifth string. We're just going five, four, three, two, one. We're gonna grab a quick C natural before we do that again. So it'll be. Then when we get to the high E this time, we're gonna grab it on four and pull it to two. Okay. got to get back into this and play it a little quicker to, to remember what happens at the end of that arpeggio. 
Okay, so let's see here. Okay. You've probably done that before. That's uh, very, you know, Alegria Sole Solea. Grabbing, uh, this is going to be a ninth. It's an F sharp in the. Uh, okay. okay, so. Okay, so quick review. Sorry. It's getting pretty late, and I already was tired four hours ago. <laughs> I was up early with my kids this morning. It's uh, 6.37 in the morning, and it's almost 2 a.m. here, where I live. And, whew, man, I have had it. Um, but I really wanted to come and uh, hang with you guys momentarily tonight, and, you know... Uh, I was almost going to just not do it, but and I went to the Foro page, and I made a post. Uh, you probably saw my video. Well, I mean, maybe you did, maybe you didn't. I posted a uh, a performance video doing a, a, a falsetta from uh, Sonicat, Paco falsetta, which let me know, and we'll get into that falsetta. That's, that's, that one's pretty nutty. If you're up for a challenge, we can learn that one. Um, and so I posted that on Foro. I thought you guys would dig it, and um, and then I put in the and and I posted with that that I would do a lesson. And I was kind of doing that on purpose to make sure that I would, you know, I like okay, well if I say I'm going to do lesson, then I'm going to have to do it. <laughs> and uh, you know, because so, I just love it. You know, I, I love this. I love hanging with you guys and showing you stuff and and learning. You know, uh, of course, I know, you know, I'm, I, I like learning stuff, too. Of course, I come to learn as well. Um, there's so many great people in this group. So I really appreciate it, guys. All right. Um, if you guys don't have any more questions for me, I'm just going to take a quick another look at the chat to see. Is there anybody even here still? Oh, yeah, you're welcome. No problem, man. You're very welcome. Um, it looks like there's a few people here. So, yeah. So, thanks, guys and girls, if there's any girls out there. I really appreciate it. And um, let me know, you know, um, hit me up on Facebook or uh, however you can. I'm on YouTube, obviously. And let me know what I can uh, show you or, you know, if you have any questions or... You know, if you just want to chat or whatever. Yeah, Trum, you know, I've been talking to him and I don't think um I've I don't think I've seen him play. We gotta see you I gotta see you play, man. Uh I'll have to jump over to you maybe after I'm done with this, I'll jump over to your channel. Maybe I don't know if you've got any videos up there, but uh I'll check it out, okay? All right, guys. All right, gentlemen. Um, we'll catch you on the next one, all right? I'll uh, pop over to Foro, and I'll maybe try to give you a little bit more warning this time. I'm getting used to, you know, they say you should give people at least 24 hours notice on a stream, on a live stream, but uh, 
you know, a lot can change in 24 hours. I'll say, okay, I'm going to do a stream. And then, you know, 18 hours goes by and I go, you know what? <laughs> I'm tired. I don't think I want to do a stream. So I get, that's a little, I'm a little nervous doing uh, 24 hours to 48 hours notice. It, it, that's a little crazy, but, uh, you know, I'm just trying to get back into this. I've neglected my YouTube channel for so long. And now that this COVID thing's happening, we're all on lockdown. I'm trying to uh, get online and, and get into the action here, you know? Oh, yeah, I should mention uh, I do give online lessons, of course. So hit me up for that if, you're, if you want to do that. I, do, I play flamenco and teach flamenco, but I also do pretty much any style under the sun. I play a little bit of everything. So if you're up for some lessons, um, I do 30-minute lessons for 30 bucks. So anytime you want to hit me up for that, I'd love to, to see you. We can do Zoom or FaceTime or Skype or Google Duo or however you want to do it. I'm up for it. All right. All right, guys. Uh, Y'all have a good night, and uh, I will see you within a, a couple of days. I'll be back with another lesson, okay? All right, y'all. We'll, we'll catch you on the next one. <laughs>